Mark, thanks for agreeing to this interview. Yeah. Great to hear from you. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> I can imagine. I, I get a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you do. The, the first one is, I, I mean, how do you get to be a flat earther? I mean, I'm sure you how, how did grow up. Yeah. Yeah. How, how did it happen? Like, where does that come from? Everybody. Uh, in fact, we've got a T-shirt and posters to that effect, which is I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth. That's how everybody gets into it. They, they everyone, everyone hates it. It's a horrible, horrible conspiracy. I don't even know if I'd call it a conspiracy. Even hardcore conspiracy guys hate this idea. They, they hate the concept because it's ridiculous, right? We've, we've, we've known for at least 500 years, and some people say much, much longer, that the, the Earth is a globe. And I, I have to clarify, you know, I say globe or sphere or ball. Uh, when, when somebody says round, it drives me a little bit insane because it's like, yeah, but round would be two-dimensional as well. I mean, a dinner plate is round, yeah, a dining room table is round. But yet I still have you know, the astronaut I talked to, well, sorry, I didn't talk to, he wasn't allowed to talk to me. Uh, he, he kept using the word round and, and Piers Morgan, you know, he's the, the host of the show kept saying round. I, I almost went through my freaking skin, but I wasn't going to interrupt because I wanted to be a nice, a nice guest. Um, yeah. but that's how, yeah, everybody starts out doing that. Think of it like this. Think of it like a, uh, I've used different analogies. Like, uh, you see somebody on a park bench playing with what appears to be like a child's toy and this child's to like a puzzle box and mm -hmm. it looks so simple from the outside you're, you're thinking uh this thing's a piece of crap you know why is this guy having such a hard time with it and eventually he gets so frustrated he puts the the box down on the bench and he walks away and you walk up to it and you sit down and you start doing the same thing and at the longer you play with it the worse it gets meaning uh there's just too many strings that they get pulled on and too many questions that start coming up so that's how everybody gets into it. But I mean, I'm sure you, you grew up being, let's say, a regular, a, glo a, glo a globalist. Sure, a globalist. Oh, oh my yeah, God, no, so. no, I was way worse than that, man. Uh, I used to collect antique globes as a hobby. I was that. I mean, I had globe bookends and you know antique globes from classrooms. Uh, I was really, I was completely enamored in the uh, the globe icon, the globe bundle, to where. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Back in 2000, when I was running a, a tech support department in Colorado, mm -hmm. I thought it'd be really cool to get iconic images, different images of Earth for all the different monitors for our team members. Yeah. And I remember going online and doing searches. And literally, when you typed in, I don't care what Boolean string you use, you know, the Earth from space and different, just different variations of that, there was literally one picture, one shot. And I couldn't see the forest for the trees to where I was going. I, the, my first impulse when I saw just that one shot was, NASA, you suck. You're terrible at this internet thing. Your, your internet presence is, how could, I mean, literally just rows and rows and rows of the Apollo 17 picture. Only uh, a couple summers ago did I finally realize that the reason that was the case was because it was the only picture that was up there. Literally, it was the only NASA blue marble image ever released from space in 43 years. Uh, the, mm -hmm. fir the first picture was taken in 1972, and they never, nobody, not just NASA, nobody took a second blue marble shot until two summers ago in 2015. And uh, so, yeah, I started out as a, as, a, as a huge globalist, I mean, for lack so of a better was, term. So was that the incident that triggered you to kind of investigate more and no. move into more? No, nope, not, not even close, because why, why would I look at it? All I thought was that, na literally, I just thought that NASA had a terrible internet presence. And okay. that, that was it. I did not get into it until I didn't even look at it again until 2014, summer of 2014, where there was a funny enough, it was a German guy. Uh, some German guy was made a video and I can't remember his name. He was talking about flight routes in the southern hemisphere, how they don't make any sense. They, they, okay. they're, they're just bouncing all over the place. The connections are ridiculous. Ninety five percent of them are these amazing connections that go so far north and they double or triple the the length that they should be and he kind of closed his video saying you know it doesn't make sense unless it's the world's flat you know like it's if, because if it's flat everything kind of kind of straightens out and all those exaggerated connections turn into uh shallow angles or straight lines in in quite mm -hmm. a few cases and i thought i thought that was pretty interesting 
And then I listened to a guy who said that he, he was a, uh, a photorealistic artist out of Montreal, Canada, who mm -hmm. said that he went to uh, um, a United States NASA function uh, in the East Coast and, and that they were talking, uh, kind of not, not even really joking about how there was a lot of systems on, on the, in the world that don't work as advertised because it's flat. And then I, I thought, okay, all right, fine. I'll dig into this a little bit. I know I can, I can debunk it. I know I can shoot this thing down. It's a piece of cake. Everybody knows this, right? Yeah. And I spent nine months working on it, literally researching everything I could possibly, you know, even joining uh, the, the Flat Earth Society, uh, at least the one that before it closed and then reopened again, the one that Thomas Dolby was in. And I worked on it so much that... I finally, I, I got obsessed with it like a lot of people. I lost a whole bunch of sleep and then <laughs> finally flipped in the beginning of February 2015 to where I said, okay, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. I can't do it. I don't, don't know why I can't exactly do it, but here's, here's my problems. And then I started making a series of videos called the Flat Earth Clues yeah and put them out there on the internet and said all right shoot it down somebody you know i put my phone number put my email address it's okay yeah blow this thing out of the water anyone i, I was literally expecting a, a professor someone in astronomy or astrophysics or something to call me up and say okay here's where you got it completely wrong here's all your points shut down that's the end you can you can stop you can close your youtube channel now and the exact opposite happened. Not only could I not get any academics to call me, although that was really for a different reason, because they don't want you don't want to be that guy, the, the, an academic that does badly against flat Earth. Uh, yeah. But other people start calling. I started getting interviews right away, and subject matter experts started calling me from different branches of the armed forces and engineers and um, surveyors and all these other guys, and they kept saying the same thing. It's like you know what, you may be onto something. And slowly but surely, things started building up, and then you know some little mainstream media stories started kicking in, and some celebrities started getting involved. And next thing you know, we just finished the first international conference down out I here. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. I saw it was, a couple of, of uh, videos about that. It was amazing. Uh, who who would have thought? You know, 241 years in the United States never never happened, and it was it was a complete success, and I was humbled to be a part of it. Uh, do not know where you know where where this thing is going at the moment, but uh, it's been a very exciting so far. Okay, um, I'm looking at pictures on YouTube uh, on Google, right? Oh. So I, the only thing that I typed in was Earth from space, like, yeah. you, like you said. Yeah. Um, so I agree with you. There's one picture that NASA have, which more or less shows the continent of the United States, some parts of like South Africa, South America, and then mostly water. Right. So in your in your theory, the Earth is flat. Why am I well? Why are there different pictures that show different continents from like probably different sides of the ball? Oh, it's it. ev everything's either CGI'd or composites. I mean, I'm not kidding you when I say there. When you look up the blue marble, and we didn't even have to again. None of this is secret information. When it comes to the actual blue marble from space, meaning the full disc picture of the Earth in space, the first one, Apollo 17, we all know, show the bottom part of Africa and all of Antarctica, which is interesting, mm -hmm. not a coincidence. Because it's like, okay, it's the North American space program. Why would you be showing Africa? Why not show North America? I mean, that's the whole point, right? Rah, rah, yeah. you know, wave the American flag. Uh, but the second blue marble shot, I mean, Obama announced it. Scott, Scott Kelly, the astronaut, wrote the, wrote the press briefing on it. But everything, I mean, it's, it's not just flat, it is enclosed, meaning you're living in, uh, for lack of a better word uh, or better term, a, a giant structure, a giant building. I mean, I could mm -hmm. use all sorts of different references, you know, planetarium, terrarium, petri dish, whatever size you want to make it. But you're living yeah. in a giant building, something where the walls are far enough away to where we didn't even know where they were until the mid 1950s and the same same thing with the ceiling we literally didn't know the dimensions of this place until almost about 1960 so any picture that and so when when and i and i hate to you know except you're not from the united states so that's fine <laughs> do not i mean the american space program i'm saying it's worse than than you know the american space program which was founded in 1958 the only reason it was even created was to keep this thing under wraps 
that's it. It was to militarize space and to keep the private companies from trying to venture venture up there. Because eventually, remember, sooner or later, because you've been preaching this globe model for, oh, I don't know, let's say 20, 25 generations, you're going to yeah. have to show the people a picture. You just get the globe in the classroom is not going to do it anymore because people are going to say, hey, don't you have the technology to actually take a picture now instead of showing this, this little toy in the classroom? And eventually you're going to have to show somebody a picture. But unfortunately, you can't just hand it to them. They would have loved to have done that and just hand them the picture. But the follow-up question is, well, how did you take it? So mm -hmm. you have to create a technology. You know, luckily we had the weapons of war, you know, thanks to you guys, actually, based off the V2, <laughs> V2 program. It's true. Yeah, Braun. Yeah, Von Braun. Oh, oh, let's, let's get into Braun a little bit. Let me jump off to the side just for a second. Von Braun is the most fascinating, one of the most fascinating men in history. Have you ever seen his headstone? His who? His, 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 his gravestone. No, I haven't. His gravestone's fascinating. You should look it up. Uh, it shows the year he was born, the year he died, and one other thing on it. It says Psalms 19.1. Now, I don't know chapter and verse as much as the next guy, so I had to look this up. Psalms 19.1 uh, that says, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Why, why would Werner von Braun be talking about a domed structure mentioned in the Bible? Why, why out of all the things, why was he picking a Bible verse at all? It's fascinating. So for me, that was one of those little things. He was reaching beyond the grave and, and saying, oh, yeah, by the way, because he would have been one of the few men in history to have known this secret. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry. Lost a little <laughs> Not fine. Um, picking up, where were we? Uh, yeah, oh, the picture, pictures, pictures, the, pictures the of the Earth from space. Oh, yeah, the whole thing, exactly. the, whole, the whole thing's fake. You, you have to fake everything, including you, you have to fake the technology. Well, you have to create a real technology just to at least simulate. It's like, oh yeah, how the way? How did you take the picture? Oh, we have this really, really big rocket and went up there, even though they did not take a picture of the Earth from. Oh, I don't know. Let's let's start with the, the ones that supposedly went beyond Earth orbit. Apollo 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. None of those took a picture of the Earth from space. Only during the last mission on the way back, when they knew it was the last mission in advance, they said, oh, yeah, by the way, well, we might as well take a picture. It's our last chance to do so. Let's And, and then they mm -hmm. shot it. I mean, it was, it, it, you couldn't have uh, asked for a better example of dragging your feet than that one. Yeah, um... And I mean, I'm um, obviously I grew up thinking, probably believing that the world is a ball. Sure, right? it's a globe. Everybody does. So I'm, I'm I'm trying to to open my mind for the idea that okay. maybe I mean you know I, I'm a journalist. I have to be. I know. I know. And look, in this. I'm not going to be gonna, able to convince you, know, you in a phone call. It, all I can do is put the idea in your head. And I'm sorry if you're looking into yeah. this, because. Uh, if, you know, it's it. I think I feel it's an interesting topic. And you know, if as soon as there's something that moves so many people and actually that there are so many people believing in that i mean you just got to look into it and then you know form your own opinion this is basically I, what i'm doing and you know looking into the whole topic from you know the different perspectives exactly so the regular which, perspective and then you know the new perspective that you guys are implementing i would say which which is one of the reasons i put at the end of every one of my videos you know do your own research and ask questions don't take my word for it don't 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 believe anything i say i mean yeah i'm, I'm just a flat earth guy i might be completely certifiably insane but at the same time it's like okay fine you, you think it's a globe? I did too. And which is why, by the way, I can't get mad or even judge people that say, oh, you're just some flat earth nutcase. It's like, look, I, I get it. I was where you were. I mean, I literally was banging my head on the keyboard going, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way. And yet when you start, unfortunately, well, or fortunately, depending on where you, where you look at it, uh, if you start leaning on the space programs, you're not going to find much. That's that's the part that throws people. It's like, oh, well, there's tons and tons and tons of evidence from the space program. So yeah, yeah. Show me where the where the evidence is, and then show me where it is in the ground, uh, because the, it's there's a real big disconnect there. So sorry. Okay, I, where I agree with you is is that part. I mean, that you could also find the other side and say, you know, some of that stuff is just classified. It's just not meant for like the regular you and me. So therefore, it's not open. Oh there. sure, sure. What, what, what I wanted to ask. What I wanted oh, to ask. Go ahead, go one ahead. of the one of the common things that I've read online is that um, one of the one of the the arguments like that that usual science has is, for instance, time zones. So if um, you're sitting in Seattle, right, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting here in DC, yep. the way the if it if it were, if it were a flat Earth, 
Right. How come the sun is on a different point on the horizon? Oh, yeah, yeah that's good. All right, yeah, and, I, and unfortunately I have to I break this down for you a little bit more. The, the sun is so tiny compared to what we think it is uh, that it is so, for example, mainstream science, and we have to memorize these things in order to try to go after them. Uh, mainstream science is the sun is what four I'm not going to break it down in kilometers for you 400,000 miles wide and 93 million miles away mm -hmm. and, and the moon is 2,000 miles wide and 237,000 miles away or yeah something like that yeah and but when it comes but if you shrunk the sun down you know if the sun and the moon are actually just you know parts of a mobile going over us like a like a uh, like a mobile going over a child's crib then the sun okay. is probably less than 50 miles wide and the same thing with the moon if it's that small all it has to do is move off into the distance that's and and by the way it doesn't even have to be an omnidirectional light source anymore uh, the, the rules just kind of don't apply to anything i mean we we've been conditioned so much say oh yeah the sun is this giant giant omnidirectional light bulb where it could be just a tiny tiny spotlight and not only the the computer models that we've done but the physical models that we've done even with an exaggerated sun which would be hundreds of miles wide on the physical models unfortunately the the, the sun is so tiny in comparison to the the land mass that's below it we have a hard time getting a physical model with a light that small you you'd have to make a uh, uh i mean the just to, just to get an led that small you'd have to make the freaking earth eight nine feet wide just to be able to squeeze it in there so it's easy enough to do so i'm sorry a short version of your time zone questions uh it's just a small directional light source and it just goes off into the distance and but we believe the illusion and then it just comes back in the morning yeah yes yeah, swings back around it's just going over around in a big circle like a needle on a record player which is by the way how you can go it'll also it also doesn't take the same track every day obviously you know the whole seasons thing you know sometimes it moves in and sometimes it moves out and there may and there may be more than one directional light source potentially if you're getting to the antarctica problem which is really the only one we're having a difficulty with now but I, i'm not too worried you know the technology yeah. used in this place get, is get into that explain explain the antarctica problem i'm intrigued the antarctica problem is that the, well, the, so you have 24-hour sun in both the arctic and the antarctic Right? Mm -hmm. On a flat model, the Arctic part works f perfectly fine. You know, it's like you know, just one light source. It moves closer, and when it gets to a certain point, well, then the, the light source is actually shining on all points of that inner circle for 24 hours. It works. But in the Antarctic, it can't work like that because we're talking about a giant coastline that surrounds us that is massive in scale. You know, Antarctica mm -hmm. is the if Antarctica is the only part of this thing which is completely foreign compared to the rest of the model uh the rest of the continents you know and again describing it you've probably seen the maps where if it is a, a flat circular structure surrounded on uh, by a, a giant coastline and we're basically in this giant uh saltwater pond lake yeah. whatever it is uh the the north pole is at the center and then antarctica which is not an island continent sits around the outside of us the antarctic shoreline which is yeah. which is way way bigger but if that's the case then how do you pull off 24 hour sun it's tricky because you can't really do it without more than one light source unless there is no 24 hour sun there's two two schools of thought there either it's happening and there's there's multiple light sources because you can't do it without any other it's just too big or you've got a, a situation where they just say there's a 24 hour sun and we never see it meaning uh, the the videotape that we've gotten from antarctica which is interesting because you know the military is the one that feeds us because antarctica is a no-go zone for any body you know uh meaning corporation or or, or mm -hmm. big organization the the time the the footage we've gotten from antarctica always shows these big gaps in in the 24-hour footage and we've we've called them up and asked them we've called up the, the the people that are in charge and they say oh yeah well it's a bandwidth issue we we don't have enough bandwidth to, to send all the, the food it's like what, what are you talking about it's like it's 2017 you can send all the bandwidth you want it's cheap uh, yeah. but so that's that's our that's the only thing that really kind of i'm still trying to work that out but i'm not too worried about it because every every day that i think uh, that our technology isn't 
even close to trying to define what's out there. I see something new. Um, in fact, there was something I just ran into, what was today, Tuesday? Two days ago, mm -hmm. where there's a company out there called uh, Colux, C-O-E-L-U-X. And they just invented an artificial skylight. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you if you ever know contractors, one of the uh, contractors' jokes is uh, a screen door in a submarine is as useful as a screen door in a submarine, or as a skylight in a basement. There's no such thing. You can't put a skylight in the basement. Yeah. Apparently now you can. Now there's a there's a new technology where you can put a skylight basically anywhere, and it's just a screen that can simulate organically with parallax uh, a blue sky and a sun. Which is, you mm -hmm. know, when you walk by it, I mean, they put walked people underneath it, you know, in brightly lit rooms, you know, where, where outside it was sunny. And they, they literally could not tell that it wasn't a real skylight. So you're saying, okay, what, what's the point? My point is the Truman Show technology and that, you know, we're talking about a movie that was 20 years old is here now on a smaller scale. Imagine what you could do with, uh, you know, a lot of resources, what sort of technology you could build, which is what we're talking about here. A giant planetarium with a display system that is orders of magnitude more advanced than what we have. So, I mean, with the, with the, with the system, right, with the, with the theory, you're basically challenging everything that we believe in. Because... Well, yeah, yeah, which is why... It, I mean, most of, most of what we believe in technology, physics, it's just, it's based on the idea that the globe is round. Exactly. Or like, you know, it's a ball. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, which is why this thing would have to be kept a secret out of, out of all the secrets out there. Remember, this is... But then why would they do that? Why would... Why, okay, so why... I mean, okay. Why, why, why would they keep just a secret? at some point decide, well, you know, we, it's just a mistake. It's, it's not a globe. It's, it's nah, flat, you know. It's... It, who who are they trying to trick? Are they trying to trick themselves, the people? What's the goal? Is, the, is, is there like a bigger picture they're looking for? Well, all right. Think of it this way. And and I know every, about one in every 10. And I don't blame you for asking because at least one out of every 10 people ask me this question. They say, why would you hide it? Why, why, why would you bother? You know, it's a globe or it's flat. Why would you bother hiding it from the people? I'm going, well, you wouldn't hide it from the people if the globe wasn't the, the globe model wasn't in play for very long because then it's just, well, it's an honest mistake. You know, we make mistakes yeah. in science all the time. But when the narrative has gone on for so long, I mean, we're talking, what, 20, 25 generations to where your parents and their parents, you know, going back farther than your family tree can probably even be tracked. Yeah. They all saw, thought the same thing. It's like, well, it's a globe. It's a globe. In fact, uh, George Orwell said the same thing. He goes, you can go to somebody on the street now, and he wrote this in the 40s, and he goes, and you ask them, how, you know, how do they know the Earth's a globe? And everyone's response is always the same. It's like, well, we know. Duh. Mm -hmm. we, we know. It's a given. It's like algebra. It's a given, right? And yeah. when you try to press them on it, they get angry. My, my thing is, okay, how did you know in 1946? Because NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. But to get back to your question. Well, I mean, because there's... Um... Yeah, you, you can geometry sticks and shadows, shadows um, yeah, that yeah. Was sure 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 started yeah. in greece probably that was it right oh yeah oh yeah yeah i i got you but think of it think of it this way the narrative has gone on so long that the the institution of science would be shaken to its core meaning think let's think of an easier example something like let's say the the catholic church i don't sorry no offense if you're catholic all of a sudden no. found a new scroll that found out the virgin mary's name was actually susan would they tell people no they wouldn't because it is too far along the narrative is too far uh too many questions it's like well who was this susan was, was the story the same as mary what about this virgin susan i mean the, the questions would go on forever it would it would undermine the pinnings of religion at least that that sect of religion think mm -hmm. of it like if science is wrong about this then you've got a huge credibility problem because like you said everything else is based off of it and, and not just astronomy and astrophysics which would basically be thrown out tomorrow think of all the remaining sciences you know geology hydrology archaeology anything with analogy anything any physical science those would have to be retooled literally from ground zero you know, they they would have to be every all these so many so much text would have to be rewritten and so much text would have to be thrown out that science would be on their heels and 
it's, I mean, that that's just the academic part. Uh, as you know, the, especially with the markets, and the longer you wait, the worse it gets. Uh, the world markets, you'd have to shut those things down for months just to figure out, okay, what does this mean to the world economies and all the industries tied to them? What, what happens yeah. there? And of course, the big one, and, I, and I, you know, I'm not going to preach chapter and verse here, but there is a spiritual side to it, which is, okay, if it was built, then... It was built by someone, which means at the very least, you're not alone. You've never been alone. Does that mean it's the handprint of God? Some people are going to say yes. Other people mm -hmm. are going to say, well, it's, it might be that God subcontracted out the work. So do you, as a scientific institution, want to give religion that sort of leverage again? Because remember, religion used to have the upper hand for a long, long time. And some, did, wonderful, yeah, yeah. some wonderful things happened during that time. Now, you could say, well, it's 2017, maybe not so bad. It's like, well, men in power uh, don't take chances like that. They don't. I, I honestly, and I'd, I'd be the first one to say, look, if I was in that meeting, you know, the long boardroom table with a bunch of scary, scary guys, I'd be, that meeting would be about 10 minutes long because they'd say, okay, what's the worst that could happen? And someone would eventually lay out what I just did. And they say, well, you know, rioting in the streets, potentially the burning down of civilization as we know it. And they're like, yeah, let's just keep a lid on this. And it's like, okay, how do you keep a lid on it? And it's pretty easy. You just spend a lot of money and be subtle in how you do it. You know, the, the sealing off the, the outer edge with the Antarctic Treaty, brilliant. Militarizing space with NASA and the Soviet Union creating the space race and then ending it suddenly in 1972, never to return. Brilliant. Uh, because you can you can hold on to that for a long, long time, which is what they did. Well, I agree with you is the, the thought, you know, to just challenge, well, aspects that are just people, you know, people just perceive them as given and, you know, just, they just accept them. I, I right. agree with you with that. Um, where I probably disagree is that, you know, that some things in life, we just accept them because, yes, you can't prove the opposite. Right. But you, you also can't really prove your point. It's like, the same way, the same way you can, you can um, delegitimize science or like the classical science, classical science can do the same thing to the flat earth, right? They or can. Like the flat earth theory. The, they can, but in, and here's where, how do I put this? I can, I, can I prove flat earth today? You know, again, treat it like a court case. Can I prove, absolutely prove flat earth? No, I can't. Of course I can't. Nobody can. You know, everyone says, where's the picture? Where's the picture? It's like, oh, if the military does have the pictures, they're not going to show anybody for obvious reasons. But I can create, here's where it's, things have changed especially because of technology nowadays and social media, I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that, and remember mainstream science, there's so many interesting things that are coming into play now. One of the reasons why we're winning, don't, don't think for a second because we're not, our numbers have just keep growing and growing and growing and growing is because science won't put up a defense against it because they still to this day think it's beneath them partially mm -hmm. and the other part is and i had a couple friends tell me who had phds they said look the reason why you're never going to get a master's or a phd that's going to come out against this thing is you don't want to be the professor that doesn't beat flat earth in the first five minutes think of it like a like a boxing match if well, flat think earth... of it think Go of ahead. it that way the first person to do that i found him professor you've got John you've got you've got a guy that's university is he willing to go on record and uh... he's a, he, I'm, I'm going to talk to him tomorrow he as far as now is willing to go on record and i'm going to show well basically the two of us are going to have the interview i'm going to show him what you just said like you know you're yeah. going to explain the um the theory that your beliefs sure. i'm going to show him that that footage and he's going to come up with his answer and then he's going to answer oh perfect you know, from the opposite side and then we'll you know no that's that's fine i would encourage everyone to just assess afterwards you know what they want to believe but. no no that that's that's perfect uh and, and great that he's willing to to do it honestly no one i, I don't what, what is he again professor johnson from the georgetown university oh cool that's that's fantastic oh local to dc great yeah he, i mean simply said we don't have the budget to just fly. Oh, no, 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 I was just saying that. So, you know, we're looking for people in the area to, that we can talk to. 
Sure. Which is why I talked to Professor Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's that's good. I mean, any anybody's better than nothing because. Well, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. For oh now, yeah, no, I'm not complaining. Go to his office tomorrow and see, you know, if it, he's it, actually willing to go on record and stuff. But, it's you know, it's going to be. As, it's going to be somewhat difficult. The, re the other reason why, remember, in academics, it's all about being published and, and you don't want to be ostracized by your community. But mm -hmm. it, is like, it is like a boxing max. And, and don't tell him this. You know, if, if you don't, if, because if he doesn't, or any professor, if you don't get into any sort of, if in a debate against Flat Earth, if science doesn't beat Flat Earth in the first round, why not? Meaning, if flat Earth is so easy, if flat Earth is so ridiculous, you should be able to stomp this thing into into the ground. And yet, mm -hmm. why why not? I mean, I've got a I, I don't mind telling you, I've got a trap question for the astronauts. If you know, like the the astronaut that I, I tried to talk to, and he absolutely yeah. would not talk to me. I they was, wouldn't. Was, they, who wouldn't lo Who wouldn't let you talk to him? No, no, no. He wasn't talking to me. Period. Uh, oh, he name... he wasn't talking to you. At all? No, no, no. He he. Uh, did I send you the video clip of um? I, you sent me the video clip. Yeah, I just thought maybe you had like a a minute, a couple of minutes off record. You know, where you had your conversation or something. Well, that's just, just it. Show. I mean, I was trying to address Terry, and you know, he's he's one of our own out here, and I was trying to address him, trying to open up some sort of dialogue with him, and he just he would not. I mean, watch it again. He never uh, spoke, mentioned my name. He never talked to me directly. He wouldn't even the blue marble shot that I threw out there was completely picked up by Piers Moore, Morgan and diverted. Uh, but that wasn't even my favorite question. My trap question, which absolutely cannot be beaten by any astronaut, is this. Are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly? Yes or no? What do you think? How, how is it a trap question? How is it a trap question? It's a trap question because... Okay. okay. It's be, it, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I I would have thought like if you said that the radiation wave is deadly, probably you know the the astronauts would die after. Well, there there you go. Deadly. If so, for deadly, yeah. And here's why it's a trap question. It's a in a flow chart. There's no way you can get around it. Um, if it's if they're deadly, if he says yes, they're deadly. I say okay, fine. Then how did Apollo 11 through 17 get through the belts round trip with no shielding, and nobody died, nobody got radiation poisoning, nobody even got cancer. You know, there's seven astronauts I think still alive from from the from those programs, mm -hmm. from, from the original programs, and so it's like okay because we and these again not classified information you could look this up there was no shielding, uh, it only lead and gold in terms of metals will protect you from from radiation. I mean, yeah, you can use a lot of water, but that's not practical. Uh, mm -hmm. And the the capsules was it was aluminum and plastic. That's basically it. So, and then if you go the other way and you say, well, no, they're not deadly. I go, okay, fine. Go to the NASA website. All you have to do, and you can Google this, look up a video called Orion Trial by Fire, which is the Mars program, where they made a special video for television where they said that the Van Allen radiation belts are so deadly that our initial capsules for the Mars program are going to be tested without people because we don't know how to solve the radiation problem. And yeah. they're very specific about this. And it's like, okay, so you can't solve the problem now, even though you solved it completely, 100% without fail in the 1960s? Is that technology gone? Uh, are, you, are you saying you went backwards in technology? And w w what are we talking about here? Uh, and this is not an old video. This isn't something from the 80s. This is from 2014, the end of 2014. So mm -hmm. you're, and pl plus it's, an, it's not uh, an independent video. Where, where it was made by like a news organization. This is literally a NASA funded video, which actually won, I believe, a, a local Emmy, uh, Emmy Award for, for its production value. And they're really oh. specific about it. So you're stuck either way. It's like, okay, so if you say they're deadly, then how'd you get through it? And if you don't say they're deadly, I turn it back and say, no, they're deadly because you already said so. That's the trap. You can't, there's nothing you can do. And I've thrown at a couple of people, and there's literally there's there's no defense against it. So no no astronaut well, can, can, can be. We'll we'll test that. Try. We'll see. By all means. Um, let Let's get back to to the beginnings of the whole theory. Sure. Is, is is there one person that came up with it, or is that you know no, started the whole conversation, no, or is it rather you know like a, you know it's just like a group. It would really. Problem? What really happened, I'm going to take as much credit as I can for this. Uh, what really changed, Flat Earth has been around forever. I didn't invent Flat Earth. Nope. Nobody invented Flat Earth. Flat Earth has been around since our civilization has been around. 
the lingerings have always been there. What changed was two things. One was social media. Mm-hmm. And two was the dummy's guide to flat earth, which was mine. Plain, plain and simple. The Flat Earth Clues, despite its lofty title, is a dummy's guide for flat earth. That's all it is. It, you, you, there's, there's practically no equations in it. I don't even touch the curvature of the earth in it. It's just a connecting the dots version of how the flat earth could be possible. And now, remember, not just flat earth, an enclosed world. Uh, to where you know you're in uh, a big structure, an artificial world that was created for you, and that started the the ball started rolling. Yeah, there were a couple people that were that were working on it at the end of 2014, and some that were working on it beforehand, but it didn't really start gain, gaining traction until you know this as well as anybody until you can reach the lowest common denominator. What what can you really do? You've got to boil it down to a verbiage that the average man on the street can understand in under five minutes. Yeah. And that's what I did. Now, I can give you the core concept in less than five minutes, and sometimes even I can do it in two, probably. But once you go from there, then comes the follow-up questions. So it's like, okay, we're in a big building, you know, with water, and there's some continents in the inside. Okay. Where, and then the questions start, and there's literally hundreds of them that, that follow up. It's like, okay, how do the oceans work? How does the jet stream work? How do, what about satellites? What about the space program? And it goes on and on and on and on until whoever's asking the questions finally gets tired of asking the questions, and they either flip or they stop at a certain point and say, I'm not going to look at this anymore because my worldview has changed so much I'm getting kind of freaked out. Yeah. Um. Okay, so how do you guys organize? Is it like, a, do you just, I don't know, meeting group meetings and no, then just talk no, about it, or like, it's it's all done through social media. Uh, as a matter of fact, the formal flatter societies have kind of been bypassed to where because we don't need them. We don't need a dedicated website with forums and uh, that that the flatter societies were were doing. And I don't mm -hmm. care what society you're talking about. What happened was what really changed was YouTube. Once YouTube became the most powerful force in media, and it is, it's just, it's just monstrous, that the, all this, there was a place where you could make videos very, very quickly and start compiling a, a big warehouse of content. Yeah. And that's where everyone was kind of meeting, you know, hanging out in the chat rooms, hanging out in hangouts. Uh, people started doing live hangouts. In fact, there's live any given day now. I don't know how many there's, you know, you type in flat earth and click on live and the filters. There's always live hangouts happening all the time for flat earth. Uh, yeah. So, so if people were doing that with Skype and, and then watching and then the, there was a lot of interaction happening there. So we didn't have to meet in person necessarily. It wasn't a, it wasn't a requirement. Then as of the end of last year and all of this year, people started doing physical hangouts where they were meeting in the local cities and mostly in the United States and the UK, but there were some outside of it as well. I'd, I'd done promos for stuff in Australia and stuff in uh, Middle East and places like yeah. that. And those are just the ones that I was doing promos for. Apparently the Indonesian flat earth community is monstrous. I don't know why. Exactly. But I, there's... Yeah, I, I saw that online. I was contemplating on contacting them because I couldn't contact anyone in here. But you know. Yeah, gonna... yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot of the people, especially in the American communities, are, are very very busy, or their contact information isn't isn't easy to find. But well, it they're... is no, it is easy to find. They just don't answer. I oh, called. Gotcha. Well, called. I contacted all of the the probably popular flatter society, you know, pages. Facebook, well, the society pages Twitter. are different, though, than the people that are the, like the people that anyone that presented at the conference, for example, have mm -hmm. almost nothing to do with the societies. The societies, I'm not kidding you, they are the old guard. They were there before we were there, but apparently but they weren't just doing anything. They were, they, they were stagnant. And so when we came along and started using social media and say, OK, this flat earth, we're going to run with it. Yeah, they we just kind of I'm not not trying to be arrogant here, but the flat earth community now the the, the organic social media version kind of left them in the dust to where I remember I had a president of one of those societies call me up and they're kind of, you know, asking for an endorsement type thing. And I, I made them a little video and and did a little interview thing for him. But I said, yeah. look, uh, where have you guys been? <laughs> we've been we've been going gangbusters now for the last 15, 18 months. 
what 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 happened? Where where have you been? So honestly, we don't. Nobody even needs the flattered societies anymore, because it's it's just all out there now in different places. Whether it be um, uh, Facebook or Twitter or a lot of YouTube, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a whole ton of stuff. So, Mike, it sounds amazing to me. <laughs> um, I'm intrigued where this is going. Um, oh, cool. So, so I mean, it, yeah, as I, as I told you, we can't fly you out because. Oh no, no, no! I don't, that. I don't care about that. Seriously, I didn't. Um, I wasn't expecting the London guys to fly me out either. Uh, if if Skype would work fine for you, uh, the setup here is pretty good. The bandwidth's not bad. I mean, you watched the video. I think it turned out. I good. watched the.